Hello everyone and welcome to this new video. So today we're gonna try to make a crystal effect like I've made uh, some time ago now in uh, the crystal portal for the RTVFX sketch. Um, it's a very easy technique and so yeah I just wanted to make a little video and show how to use it. So it should be pretty fast since it's pretty simple. So first of all we want to create a mesh that will be well, our crystal uh, I'm not gonna make an actual crystal shape like a pyramid or, so, or something or gem. Uh, I just want it to be like more like reflections on the ground. So yeah, let's start. Uh, I'm going to start by just creating a small plane here. And uh, that's a bit. There is a bit too many polygons here, so maybe three by three or four by four should be fine. Okay. So now. Crystals are generally very uh, symmetrical and defined and stuff. But here, since I want to make reflections, a bit like caustics on the ground, I'm going to make them very not symmetrical. <laughs> so I'm going to just cut across the mesh a bit randomly. A bit like this, and maybe one here. Yeah, so sounds good. And then I'm just going to merge all the points together. So here I have the, some shortcuts here for my, my own use, but you can find the merge tool. I think it's here, yeah. Merge to center. And you can control shift to add it to your shortcuts here. So it's very, very efficient. Here, I'm just going to merge some of them so that the mesh is a bit simpler. Here. Here. Mm. Ah, sounds good. Maybe here. Okay. Then we are gonna try to make them a bit more as if they emanate from the center. So I'm just gonna move all the vertices once again a bit randomly. Here. Hmm. Now those need to be merged here. Maybe scale some down, move them around. Up. Hmm. Here. And those ones, maybe merge them. Hmm. Just those two. Here, mm. I guess something like that could work. Yeah, it needs to be pretty dirty. <laughs> Your mesh cannot be very clean. Uh, depends on what you want, but. In my case, I want it to be a bit special, so... Yeah, should be good like that. Oh, merge those two, okay. And uh, maybe delete a few. So control backspace to delete the component. Here, here, those don't really matter much. So we can delete them, same here. Uh, maybe not this one. Okay, so then we can use the UV editor here. And we are just gonna recreate the UVs because here it's a bit broken. So just do this by clicking here, just to make a, a cubic projection. And so you have all your UVs here. So now if I add a texture here, like a line, that will pan over the mesh. It will go like this or like this, but all the polygons will have like exactly the same texture panning over it, over them. And while well, it won't look like a crystal at all, just this shape with the panning texture of it. So what we are gonna do, we are just gonna split all the UVs. So into cuts you split. And here we are just gonna select the UV islands 
and just move them around, once again a bit randomly. You can get different effects depending on how you move them, but here, I mean, random sounds good. So let's just do that. Whoop. Just gonna put them outside so I have some space. Here. Okay. Let's move those here a bit. And, yeah. and then just scale all that down a bit. And then we can rotate them too. Because once again, if we pass that in a texture, or rather if we pass a texture into that, well, everything would be very much the same. But yeah, you'll see, just in a few moments. Yeah, just rotate your stuff pretty much randomly. Here, here, I don't know, this one. This one, I don't remember if I rotated, but it's fine. This one maybe a bit. Yeah, like that. And now we're just gonna export it. So, export selection. I already have the address here. So, I'm just gonna call it Crystal uh, Plane Tutorial. Okay, now go into Unity. I haven't made anything in Unity here, it's just a scene with a, a black. Plane. <laughs> That's it. Just save my little uh, folders here. I tested some stuff before making the video to make sure, <laughs> but just make it so that it's uh, an empty scene. And then just take the one we just made. Oh, fuck. Which one is it? Uh, I'm guessing it's this one. What did I call it? <laughs> the one is out underscore. Okay, so this one. But in zero zero zero, well, it's a bit small. Let's scroll that up a bit. Whoop. Okay. So you see nothing special yet, just a mesh. And now, just to show you, we're just gonna create a new material, just so you can see what it looks like. Let's just call it test here. And in Albedo, I'm just gonna take my simple one. And so you can see here already, without anything special in the shader, we already have some kind of crystal facets. And I mean, that's a very good start, but it's very static. There's just nothing there. <laughs> it's just a texture <laughs> placed on it. But yeah, now we're gonna make them pan over it and add a little Fresnel to make it look a bit better. So let's just do that. I already made one, but let's create another one here. So I do it with you. So standard and let's call it oh, I don't know, I'm not very good with names. Uh panning crystal tutorial. Yeah, originality. And yeah, also I kind of stopped using Shader Forge for my personal work. Um I just found another one that I think is much better. Uh, it's Amplify Shader, which I will be using here. It's very, very, very similar to Shader Forge. So I mean even if you have Shader Forge and don't have Amplify Shader, you will understand what I do. It's very basic, it's very simple. I just want the, the UI to be much better and it's much more stable for me, so I switched over to it. And also Unity will soon have its own Shader Graph. I, I mean, in 2018 they already have it, but I tested it and it's not very stable and there isn't a lot of options yet, <laughs> so for now I'll be using this one. Okay, so here you have your new shader, nothing in it yet. Uh, I just want to create a texture. So texture, first a sample, and then the texture object here. Oh, this one will be where you will call the texture, so uh, let's call it main texture. That's the original. 
and I will be using the same texture here, texture trail. This one, I think we made this one in another tutorial. So, I mean, it's very simple. It's just a gradient in Photoshop. It's nothing special. <laughs> so just link this into this. And then the UVs, we will just use a panel here. And we'll be using the UV coordinates of the texture. So the texture coordinates here and here. Okay. So now with this, we can control the tiling. Even the offset, if we need, I won't be using this this time, but it's useful. And the speed and, of course, the time. So, first of all, we just need to create a, two vector, a vector 2. So, just press 1 for a float, 2 for vector 2, 3 for vector 3, and 4 for vector 4. You got it. And then click here to, create, uh, to change it from constants to property. A constant will not be visible in the editor, you cannot edit it. Uh, in real time, I think. Uh, but property, that's what I always use. That's what you will be able to edit in the material. Uh, so put this in tiling and of course call this tiling here and we'll be using one one. Okay. And then we can duplicate this one because we also need a vector 2 for the speed. Let's just call it to speed and put that here. As you can see, it's already moving here, which is great. It, it's working. <laughs> And then we just need, nope, not this time. Here. Yeah. I don't think it's necessary actually, it's just, there is a thing for time and time works in it, so I'm just used to doing that. <laughs> but if, if you don't plug anything here, it's fine. Um, it, I think it's just cleaner. So, if you already try this into the emission, Control S to compile and save the shader. And if you create a material out of it here, <laughs> that's a good name. And put it here. Yay, it is working. It's a bit fast, but I mean, the thing is working. So maybe 0.15. Yay. Yeah, that's working. Instead of this texture, I think it's just a glow, like the default particle, actually, works better. It's less of a, just a line crossing over it. It can go in all directions now, so it's much better. It's, uh, yeah, it's much better in my opinion. So yeah, here you can see, yay, it's looking great. And now let's just add a funnel with some colors to it. So for this, whoop, zoom out a bit. I'm just gonna put this a bit over here, and we have more. Whoop, that we have more space. Okay. Then we just need a funnel, and for the funnel we have bias, scale, and power available, and all of those are just floats. So one float, and we need this to be a property, and just just call them funnel bias. Bias needs to be a zero by default because, well, it's a bias. Uh, then it's funnel scale, this multiplier, so one, and funnel power, one again. And just plug them here. Then we just need a lerp. And I want two colors, so I will be using color here. Once again, property, and just name them, I don't know, color one. I want this to be cyan, and this color two. And I want this to be pink, because I love those colors. Here, and cyan will be A, pink will be B, and this will be the alpha. And as you can see here, it is working just as intended. Uh, just one thing that I like to do with Frenners is to clamp the values. Because sometimes you can go overboard a bit. I uh, don't really want that. So just to make sure, create a clamp between 0 and 1. And out here. And here. Don't change anything in this case because we don't use any crazy values, but just to make sure. 
and then just multiply everything by this. Oh. Save. And here you have a nice little crystal thing. Yay! <laughs> so yeah, it's very simple. I mean, I just wanted to show how to cleverly use the mesh uh, UVs to create different effects. Um, but yeah, it's nothing very special. Uh, just one last thing maybe, because here you can see that it's alpha, so you can see the darkness in there. And I want this to be additive because it's supposed to be light. Uh, so instead of opaque here, I just want to go transparent, and here overlay, and here additive. And I don't want this to be standard, but rather, well, and it, and it works fine. Okay, I think it's gone. Uh, nope. Uh, it's not, I didn't do the thing yet. And yeah, now it works just fine. Okay. Yep. Okay, so yeah, you see, you have a nice little uh, crystal shape here. And just playing around with the values, with the shader a bit, and especially with the mesh geometry, you can get some really nice uh, effects with that. You can smooth out the edges. Um, actually, let's do that. It should be very simple. I haven't done that in this version of Maya yet. Let's to find where I put the... Uh, I mean... The mesh colors should be... Mesh... And yeah, mesh tools... No, mesh display maybe. Apply color. Okay, that's this one. Okay. Let's just select the colors for the... Uh, well, all the colors actually. First, I just want the color to be white and full alpha for everything. And then select all of those, just select one, the breaking on the next one, select the loop, and alpha zero. Yeah. Yeah, should be fine. And then just export it again. And it is not working. <laughs> uh, why isn't it working? Oh, okay, yeah, of course. Uh, because I have to add the vertex color to this. So multiply, I need vertex color here. And alpha here, multiply. And that should be good. And here you have it. Nice little crystal effect. Very simple, once again, but I mean, just to give you the idea and maybe give you more ideas on how to make stuff. So yeah, hope you enjoyed it and please feel free to share your creations and if you want feedback, just ask me. And yeah, hope you enjoyed it. Have a good day. Bye bye. <laughs>